there for a little tour. We wanted something different, and that's when my brother here comes up with one of his brilliant ideas. Order's ready in 30 seconds, not 30 minutes. Unique, original, there's nothing like this. It's revolutionary. That's exactly what it is, it's revolutionary. I play uh, Mac McDonald uh, in The Founder, and uh, Mac is one of the two uh, founders, original founders of the McDonald's company. Uh, and he's portrayed in the film, and I think in life he was a, a people person, somebody who cared about his employees and who made sure that people were happy working at the McDonald's uh, that they owned. Uh, and he also idolized uh, his brother Dick's uh, ingenuity and, uh, and uh, inspiration. Uh, I'm Nick Offerman. I played Dick McDonald, um, the, uh, the, the brains, the slide rule behind the speedy system that we created together. Uh, and I, you know, for, for me, I really love representing this guy who had the hard work and, and sweat equity to create this, this incredible uh, product in the story and only to then see it taken away by nefarious means. What you ought to be doing is owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. Franchise Realty Corporation. It's its own separate company, which puts it outside your purview. I play Harry Sonnenborn, who was a financial genius who became the first president of McDonald's. And he came up with the revolutionary system that made McDonald's what it is today, which is that it's really a real estate company that leases the land to the franchisees instead of a burger company. And that's what enabled Ray Kroc to make the company so big and, and to push out the McDonald's brothers. I say to him, you're not in the burger business, you're in the real estate business. And that's what transformed McDonald's from what it had been, which was more of a small town um, ideal restaurant restaurant to this massive global corporation. What is that? The Golden Arches. It's a way to make the place stand out. Huh. There should be McDonald's everywhere. Franchise the damn thing. Mr. Croc. Franchise. 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 McDonald's can be the new American church. And it ain't just open on Sundays, boys. The beauty of the movie is that we're, we're left to decide for ourselves whether or not Ray Kroc was a success. Um, obviously, he was financially successful. Obviously, he was, a, he was a dominant figure in American culture and a dominant figure in American business. But the question is, is that a good thing, is what we're left with? Yeah, we live in a world where capitalism has really succeeded in a lot of ways. And we're faced with, we've become soft in a way where a lot of our lives are filled with luxury, you know, the thought of my grandfather living without air conditioning versus myself is a, is a very contrasting thought. And so we're, I, I think that the film is important because it leaves, it leaves the final judgment open to the interpretation of the audience. How much is your integrity worth? You know, is it, is it more important to make as much money as possible or for your family and your community? to eat real meat <laughs> and you know we're and the answer lies somewhere in between those and I think we're very much faced with that question of integrity these days I think it's a great American story it's about the small town small business values that built a great restaurant and then it's also about the ruthless Wall Street level ambition that made it into this giant corporation and the battle between them and the cost of that I know what you're thinking. How the heck does a 52-year-old, over-the-hill, milkshake machine salesman build a fast food empire with 1,600 restaurants and an annual revenue of $700 million? One word, persistence. I had some trouble at home, I'll, I'll admit. I fell in love with him, and uh, it was not reciprocated, but I... I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I was kind of neglecting Megan when I would go home and I would make her run our scenes together. <laughs> and, uh, and I would only show her affection if she would speak Ray Kroc's lines. We're, we're, we're doing well now. Wow. We worked through it. I'm so sorry. It was tough. For Michael. Oh, for Michael. It's, yes. those, those, it's those blue eyes. Um, I've had the good fortune of working with Michael before, and it was great to work with him again. I, I really loved watching uh, not only uh, how much fun it is to work with him 
uh, in the scenes that we got to work with, but also to watch him hone in on the character of Ray Kroc and to uh, transformation is a word that people throw around uh, uh, when somebody uh, you know puts on a wig and a mustache and wow I never thought it was them and uh, but what he does is he transforms in an interior way which is so subtle and you you can almost mistake him for Michael Keaton but he's not and that's what I love about his work he's a very exciting actor to work with he's a really electric spirit and you never quite know where his energy is going to take you and I think that's what makes him so great for Ray Kroc who was such a complicated and brilliant but uh, unpredictable and you know complicated figure. That glorious name McDonald's. I had to have it. You don't have it. You sure about that? <laughs>